30 years have since passed, and while a whole lot has changed, the song remains the same. The Wolf Still Rocks. Hey there, it's Brian Ellis, Morning Show 101.5 The Wolf. We continue our video series celebrating The Wolf's 30th birthday. We launched the radio station February 14th, 1992. This guy was along for the ride in those 30 years. We say uh, hello to Brad McDougal. Hi, Brad. Hi, Brian. Good to see you. When did you join us at The Wolf as an on-air announcer? I'm going to say it was 96, 97. Don't quote okay. me on that. Okay. Um, I had been, uh, I started as an intern out of Humber. Mm-hmm. And I, in a sense, I was coming back home, having been born and raised for most of my life in Peterborough. Okay. It was, uh, I'd been living in Toronto. So it was when they asked at Humber, where would you like to co-op? Ooh, let's go back to the Wolf. Why not? Why not? And uh, ended up, yeah, got co-op there. And then that led to um, meeting all you guys. Uh, I, I worked with um, with Carrie and John in promotions and marketing as a, as a co-op intern. Mm-hmm. And then somehow had pictures of people, weaseled my way doing weekend news, which is a whole other story. Yep. And then from there, uh, ended up all requests Saturday nights. Yeah, it's funny. We've been we've been chatting um, throughout this video series about the All Request Saturday Night, and throughout the thirty years, what a staple that show has been. Yeah. Um, take us back to to your thoughts hosting that show. Well, the the cool thing was is that I was part of the first major move of the Wolf. We were up on 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 Television Hill, up at the top of the hill, mm-hmm. pretty much you know isolated. It'd be per- it's the perfect place for the for the uh, zombie apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On top of the hill, well-protected bunker. So you were pretty isolated. And what you found out on Saturday nights is you'd get the same folks calling at the same time for the same song. Yeah. And after a few weeks, you'd build up a little relationship with the folks. So you'd kind of find out how their families are doing. And so that was kind of fun. But the, the great thing was when we moved downtown um, and the studios were right on Main Street, you had the glass. Mm-hmm is that things got a little more interactive, shall we say. Yeah. People uh, little, got little very, flashing. very inventive. A little flashing. I'd like to say little. Okay, a lot it, of flashing. Oh, yeah. It, was, it, it, seemed to, it seemed to catch on. Uh, and uh, there was, you know, bang, 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 some flashing, bang, 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 flashing, and a song written, which that's right. just, yes. you know you're getting played then. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was just a great time. I mean, you really felt that move downtown, you really started to feel the energy of a Saturday night, which is nice, which I think helped kind of create the party atmosphere of the night. And, and, uh, between you and I, you know, if there was a nice theme going on, there might be a song I'd like to hear. Sure. Okay. Why not? Joe from Omimi would like to hear. You know, um, yeah, the corner of King and George is uh, is where we were. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but since then, we have now moved to uh, to Monaghan Road, yes. um, just sure. uh, not too far from Lansdowne Place. We're in the same building with Global Peterborough, Chex Television. But I always... I always cringed a bit with that glass uh, on on George Street, the the you know the windows. Yeah, you would see like lip prints on there, and I just thought, you know what, that glass doesn't get cleaned that often. No, and and I think uh, I think we'd be happy some days that you saw lip prints. Yeah, <laughs> many things were pressed up against that glass. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, so, I missed out on the opportunity to host the uh, the All Request Saturday Night. Uh, you guys, it was uh, you guys interesting had fun. times. You, yeah, you guys. and you heard from some very interesting people, some very interesting why they wanted to hear the song. It, it's funny you get into. I, I mean, that's the thing. Music's playing. You can chat offline or back then, you know, on the phone line. Mm-hmm. And uh, yo, you oh yeah, it became a therapy session. Absolutely, which was like, oh god, you're well. She oh she broke up with me. And and then you get the whole story. Yeah. Yep. So yep. no, it was cool. It was a it was a lot of fun. And and the nice thing is, before that, when we were still up in the hill, um, even when I was interning, it was it was uh, well the season of when Griff was the morning man. Griff Henderson. Yes. And I was there for his mayoral run. 
Yeah. And, uh, and that was a blast. Cause I, I mean, I was, I was very lucky befriended Griff and everybody was great and ended up creating a character that would pop up on his morning show every so often during his mayoral candidate, his French Canadian pollster. I forgot. I tried to remember his name. I forgot and he's about probably that. Probably because it's completely politically incorrect right now. You know, I, I was just I chatted with with Griff um, about that, and and again, he was with us for a couple of years. Uh, mm-hmm. Did the morning show, and and um, yeah, the, he you know decided to kind of do this stunt of of running for mayor, and um, eventually he you know dropped out because you know we got uh, he was getting he was starting to rise in the pools, as they yeah. say. Yeah, and the, there were complaints saying, "Oh, you're not taking this serious." And then if he did run, um, he'd have to take himself off the air yeah. during, you know. So he he you know kind of bowed out of that. But I remember, like you know, people had um, you know Mayor Griff oh, yeah. signs, Griff for Mayor, their, oh, yeah. Griff for Mayor oh, yeah. signs on their on their front lawn. Um, the other thing I've been chatting about with the announcers, and this has been something that's carried through over the 30 years, is you know, going out and uh, going to a community event or <laughs> doing a doing a road show, yeah, and just how great the fa- how how great the listeners, the fans were mm-hmm. uh, to this day, amazing. Oh yeah, meeting meeting the people that like, especially meeting those that would come up and say, "Hey, I requested this on Saturday night and stuff like that." Putting names to faces uh, was very cool, and then just I mean, the amount we say this now, I mean, the amount of live shows that the station promoted. That, that we got to go out and host and, and meet the bands and meet the people. And I mean, one highlight, well, I remember um, I got to my fiance at the time, wife now of 24 years. Nice. Uh, we got to go uh, with fans who won a contest to go see Elton John at Skydome in a limo. And I did call-ins from the limo the whole time. So yep. the limo was stocked. So pacing of the call-ins was very important. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's funny how uh, rules have changed uh, now. <laughs> you know, with uh, uh, with things we can do as far as uh, stocking a limo with booze yes. for the listeners. Uh, yeah. yeah, not not quite able to do that, but no. Uh, no. And what's that, li- live music? I've heard of such things. Yeah, it's yeah, that's talk about oh, it. or the, the old people talk about it. That's yeah. the other thing. I know we're uh, we're certainly missing uh, concerts these days. Um, you know, I, it, it's 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 fun to to look back at the thirty years and and um, you know what a thrill for you, I guess, to be able to say you know that you worked at you know your hometown radio mm-hmm. station. You know? Well, no, it's, I mean, that was, and the nice thing is, is that especially in the summers, even when I was living in Toronto and working, I mean, the, uh, you know, go to our cottage north of Peterborough, I mean, even up, um, you know, like Simcoe Way, you're putting it on, you find the wolf in, on the weekends. It was like, what a great station. Yep. And, uh, and that was when it was, when I decided to take radio at Humber's, like, well, what do you want to get into? I'm like, I need to enjoy the music I'm playing. So let's yeah. go to the wolf. And then yeah. it all, it all, it, it, it worked out. And then, um, and then, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, especially knowing the town, knowing the people being, you know, local as it were, ish, yep. Yep. Um, was, was very cool. And even today when people say, Oh, you know, what have you done? And I said, Oh, you know, on the wolf. Oof, 101.5 Central Ontario's best rock. Yeah, isn't that oh, funny? Oof. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that was and the nice thing is, I mean, we were we were right at the start. Of this I'm gonna really age myself, but that the internet was leaking into things. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were still using CDs. Yep. And which leads me to the one story of how three times I believe I played Monster Mash, not on Halloween. Oh, it was one track off a very popular song. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was and, like July, <laughs> and I remember that. Yeah, you, you, we would put the CD in the player, and then there was like a, a dial, right? Mm-hmm. And you would turn to the cut. And you're right if you if you didn't if it was track eight, but you accidentally went to yeah. track nine, that's what started to yeah. play. That's and try and that's like, do you let Monster Mash play in July or do you cut it? And I'm like, <laughs> I'll, and it was all request Saturday night, so. <laughs> Somebody requested. Just play Joe, it. Joe Just from Norwood. It. Joe from Norwood. <laughs> what do you know, Joe? Cover me, buddy. Uh, listen, uh, what are you up to these days, Brad? Uh, for the past 10 years. So when I left uh, The Wolf, it was actually for a TV gig. 
Um, I ended up uh, hosting uh, a couple of shows and things like that. And then um, ended up doing behind the scenes uh, producer writing things for the production company that was producing the show. Okay. And that's actually what I took at university okay. before going to Humber. And uh, anyway, love that. Um, Realize that being in front of the camera, pff, you're disposable being behind. So um, ended up working uh, for various production companies, uh, downtown Toronto, working on really cool projects. And then about 10 years ago, went out on my own, started uh, Creative Harbor, mm -hmm. which uh, has been a awesome uh, project company for myself. We do uh, advertising, we do commercials, we do documentaries, we're working on a couple of TV pilots. So multimedia. And, nice. uh, and, the, and the, the, the irony of all this is that when I scratch track uh, projects, so I, if you just lay a rough voiceover down, mm -hmm. I'm able to do that with reasonable proficiency. That's right. Thanks to radio time. And there've been a few times that the client says, no, no, that voice is good. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> So, but it's also great. We directing a lot of uh, voiceover radio. I mean, having been on the other side of the mic, mm -hmm. I think leads gives great um, value to be able to direct talent. Right. That's amazing. knowing what I'm listening yep. for, knowing yep. style yep. and things yep. like that. So that has been it's been uh, invaluable. But oh, well, I was just when we were coordinating this. Just yeah, the stories that um, yeah. I mean, the, if I can throw in what the the highlight. Mm -hmm. For me, and this ties back to being when you were younger, was as a teenager, loved Gowan. I was all about Larry Gowan. Yeah, Larry I Gowan. think I saw him 10 times at the forum. And he was coming to Peterborough, and, and you guys had known that I was a fan and said, hey, do you want to interview and host him? So, and uh, he had just done the tribute for Diana, Princess Diana's passing. He was the one, one of the few Canadians. Interviewed him, sat beside me, played guitar when he was in his You Can Call Me Larry days. And then got up on the stage at Del Clary, announced him in front of thousands yep. of people. I remember that. And he came on and, and uh, yeah, that was, that was, I mean, meeting your childhood heroes, geeking out a little. He's yep. a great guy. And then being able to do that, that was, that was a highlight. That was very cool. I remember that show. Um, and uh, yeah, th thanks for sharing uh, some memories. It's been fantastic going through and chatting with all of the uh, the former announcers and staff. Uh, Brad McDougal, thanks so much. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, Take care. On the Wolf, 101.5. <laughs>